It's that time of year. What time, you may ask? Time to put up nest boxes, of course. In this video, we will be talking about everything from what birds may use them to common problems you may encounter. Now, this particular thing goes by many names, so you may know it as birdhouse, bird box, or as I said before, nest box, but it's pretty much the same thing. Okay, I've talked enough. Let's get into it. So, first off, what is a nest box? Well, it's a box with one or more entry holes made as an artificial nesting site for birds. Now, you may be asking yourself, if these are artificial, shouldn't we just let the birds do their own thing and not mess around with their regular behaviors? Well, the answer to this question kind of depends. As with everything in non-natural interactions between humans and wildlife, it is tricky, but if done safely and respectfully, will most likely benefit both animal and human. With humans constantly removing habitat crucial to many bird species, adding artificial nest boxes is important to keeping the birds which rely on those habitats from extinction. For example, eastern bluebirds had a decline in population in the early 1920s, but in the 1960s and 70s, bluebird trials and other bluebird nest box movements, as well as individuals creating their own bluebird nest boxes, helped to increase the population. Even still, the eastern bluebird population still relies on stuff like this, as many natural nest sites have been removed or taken over by other non-native species, such as European starlings or house sparrows. So, now that we've established that nest boxes are good for birds, what kind of birds will use it? Well, not just any bird will show up and hop right into the hole. The main birds that use nest boxes are cavity nesters. Cavity nesters are any type of bird that would normally nest in an enclosed hole in a tree or other structure. This group includes birds such as woodpeckers, chickadees, wrens, and even some birds of prey. Now, keep in mind, not all of these birds excavate their own holes. Some use old cavity from birds that are built for excavating, such as woodpeckers. Often, woodpeckers will make a new cavity each year, so these old holes make great homes for other birds. This whole birdhouse thing sounds really great. How do I put one out? Well, there are two options. Number one, you can buy pre-made. Or number two, you can build your own. Both of these are equally beneficial to the birds, if done correctly. There are so many different shapes and sizes which may attract different species. Since there are so many different dimensions, I will leave a link in the description to Cornell's Nest Watch. They have a huge page full of all the different birds that may use nest boxes and the ideal dimensions for all of them. So, whether you're buying or building, some of the main qualities that you want to look for is untreated wood, plenty of drainage and ventilation, as well as a hinged door. Now, you may be thinking, a hinged door? Are you crazy? That'll just let predators in. Well, if you have a sufficient latch to keep the door in place when it's not open, it should not be a problem. The reasoning for the door is to let you monitor and clean the nest box. Once again, the link in the description is a great resource if you want to take a look at it. Once you have a nest box, you need to put it up. You want to put it up well before the breeding season. The exact habitat you should place your nest box in depends on the species. But a word of warning, places such as lawns, gardens, and cultivated fields would be great places for nest boxes, but only if no pesticides or herbicides are used. These can affect the natural insects that birds consume, thus directly affecting the birds. So, try to keep things as natural as possible. So, when you put a nest box or two or even three up, it's your responsibility to maintain and monitor the box. To maintain it, Thoroughly clean it at least once, preferably at the end of the breeding season. This includes scrubbing it down and removing the inactive nest. This helps to prevent parasites and keeps birds from continually building a nest on top of a nest on top of a nest on top of a nest. Uh, you get the idea. This buildup of nests could bring the current active nest closer to the hole, which would allow predators easier access. Another part of maintaining is also fixing any problems that may negatively affect the nesting birds. So, I also said monitoring. Now, I don't mean checking the box every two minutes. Check in maybe once a week to make sure everything's in order. 
These checks should be a quick peek, no longer than a minute. The checks should not be in the early morning, as many females lay their eggs at that time. So, you may be asking, what are we checking for? Well, stuff like signs that predators have visited, any dead birds that must be removed, any small pests or parasites, or any fledglings tangled in nesting material are all great things to look for. If none of these things are happening, then I think your nest box is perfectly fine. There are many problems that may arise with nest boxes, but one of the largest is predators and invasive species. Now, dealing with predators is pretty difficult. A nest box should be built well to keep them out, but if that does not work, adding a baffle to the pole or even a predator guard like a small cage through which the birds can fit, but not predators like raccoons or cats, are great options. Now, keeping invasive species out is a whole nother story. By invasive species, I mean birds like European starlings and house sparrows. Now, house sparrows appear pretty sweet and innocent, but they will sometimes kill native fledglings and adult birds in order to take over their nesting spot. In order to keep European starlings and house sparrows out of nest boxes, move them to a spot away from humans. Both these invasive birds thrive near humans, so moving the nest box to somewhere more secluded would make it less appealing. Or only put up the nest box when the birds you want to nest in the box are returning to breed and nest. The European starlings and house sparrows stay year-round, so this will keep them from claiming the box first. If that prevention does not work, you are legally allowed in the U.S. to remove both house sparrow and European starling nests, as they are not protected under the Migratory Bird Treaty Act. Absurdly, both these birds, which originally came from the U.K., are thriving in the United States, but sadly, in the United Kingdom, both these native species have been listed as threatened, as their numbers have dropped drastically. There is not a known reason for this decline, but it is thought that house sparrows have suffered a shortage of insects in the breeding months in urban areas such as London, and starlings may have been affected by the loss of their home meadows. Well, this was a longer video, but I covered a lot of information. Once again, I put a link to a great resource from Cornell in the description, so check it out. If you have any questions on any nest box related topic, drop them in the comments below and I will be happy to try to answer them. I hope you enjoyed learning everything you need to know about nest boxes as much as I did. If you found this video helpful or entertaining, please don't forget to leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you know when I release a new video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time on Bird Nerd.